I'm just going to go through uh, how we purchased 11 properties in 32 months since uh, June 2010. Uh, so the presentation will be um, the first one is how we got our um, current um, nine rentals. Um, the second one is uh, typical advice for um, property advice, uh, like we been sharing, um, but I really want to get into the personal development. Um, I think personal development and property, uh, even business, or basically money making thing, it has to be in a balance. Um, so my background, uh, I come from Guangzhou, China in 96 when I was 13. I went to Avenue College uh, and then Auckland Uni and now I'm uh, working full time as a civil engineer at Auckland Transport. My wife, um, she's from Tianjin, China. 2001, she was um, basically a, a, um, a student, and now she's working uh, as office office manager at the Tao People Limited, and we got married in April 2010. Uh, before John, joining One Innovation, I made the same mistake as Gordon did. Well, not a mistake, but more of a learning curve. Um, like Robert Kiyosaki says, you know, most business business owners. Your first three business will always go, go bust. Um, that's pretty much what I did. Um, so my first crack in making money was, uh, yeah, just before the GFC and lost 20K of that. Uh, at the same, around the same time, I uh, got sucked suck into direct selling, um, USANA. But actually, uh, um, it's not the business that was a problem. It was uh, my problem because I'm, uh, I'm a kind of a computer geek. I'm, um, I'm introvert by nature. I like to play computer games and things. So. Direct selling was a completely new skill to me, right? And I was just wasn't ready, you know. I wasn't. I don't want to sell stuff, you know. I just want to make money, not selling. Um, and uh, I'm also quite direct too. So if people aren't interested, then I'm not interested, you know. So now I felt at that. And um, but the good thing about it is I start uh, reading books like uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. That was really good. Um, uh, learn about passive income, the importance of it. Because um, I once had a, I had a quite a childish dream was that. Um, I, I don't have to work, and then I can play World of Warcraft, which is an online game, um, <laughs> full time, pretty much. Um, that was 24, so I'm, I'm a quite a late. I'm 30 now, so uh, I'm, a, I'm a quite a late boomer kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, let's start learning about you know, properties, and I went to the free seminars. Uh, back then, I actually didn't, didn't even know about Apia. I just went to a Rich Mastery, which now collapsed, um, uh, and then that's how I uh, met Ron. And that was about. 08, 09, something like 08, yeah, and I uh, really wanted to join, but um, back then I was still single, uh, and um, yeah, I lost a lot of money, so I, did, I had the fee to join, but I didn't have the deposit, so I just tried to pull my mum into it, but she wasn't interested, so unfortunately I put that on hold, and then, um, yeah, if, eventually when you go into a, um, free cinemas enough, you get stuck into it. Um, Rich Mastery was great at the start, but yeah, the owner, he didn't have enough personal development in him, so he, he go, uh, he started to start um, scamming people money. And so I joined the tax lien deed thing, uh, course in March 2009. Um, the course was just three days, and you learn a lot from it, but there's no support. And pretty much 99% of people just lost money in that. Uh, but I did make it work at the end. Um, bought and sold 20 land parcels in um, Florida. Uh, it's pretty easy, $2,000 US, you buy a um, quarter acre, which is 1,000 square meters, you sell it off for 2,500, sometimes even less. So um, and this is just not worthwhile. Um, but uh, I did learn from it. Uh, I had buyers from all, all over the world, uh, it was quite fun, uh, but a lot, of, a lot stressful too. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's like one, two, three, three failed businesses. So after I joined Renovate, uh, yeah, I, I met Cindy and I got married. And, and as a Chinese thing, usually your parent is really grateful enough to, to give me the deposit to buy a home. So I had uh, 180K um, reward credit for my own home. Uh, so I was really fortunate. And then I um, decided to join Renovation uh, in 2010. Uh, I purchased two properties in the first months. Uh, and then I purchased a total of 11 properties um, in 32 months. I kept nine as rentals. Uh, now I currently have like 1.3 mil um, equity, uh, and I, oh, I got passive income. But uh, it's actually 22k now. But that's after deducting my home mortgage as well. So um, my home mortgage is like paid for under the company uh, LTC at F, which is really good. Um, yeah, uh, 
my, yeah, my strategy is pretty much I want to buy in central Auckland. I don't want to buy in south Auckland or west or wild west or east Auckland because I live in, in central, so it's, it's quite far. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lazy, you know. I, I'm, I'm in the computer all the time. You know? I don't like to walk outside. Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, uh, a lot of peop students are buying units because um, most of us are just working people and we don't have a lot of cash around. So the units, what I found back then was it, it, it gave really good cash flow, uh, also really good equity. Um, I wrote a lot of books about no money down strategies and I really want to do that. Like, for example, you buy a property, you put minimum as you can, and then three months, six months, you revalue it, and then you get your deposit out, and then you keep buying it. That's what I've been doing. So. Uh, this one um, is a one-bedroom unit uh, with a uh, deceased estate, um, 50 square meters, 12 in a block. Uh, I purchased at, uh, oh, no, number's not in here. Uh, I purchased for 173,500. Um, so this is what it looks like. Um, you know, your 70s unit, um, no flashy renovation or anything. Original um, bathroom and kitchen. Uh, that's day one, pretty much. Uh, we demolished most of it. Um, we kept the toilet thing. Um, yeah, as an rent, average rental, you don't need a flashy thing um, to keep the cost down. So this is the after picture. We made it into two bedrooms. Um, yeah, if you, so basically, this, this area was like a dining kind of area that's not used much, and so we just put a bedroom in there. Uh, it's not the best rental, I guess, but um, it does its job, um, keeping the rent flowing. Um, yeah, so just the, you know, your standard um, beige, well, neutral color decorations. Uh, that's the second bedroom. Um, that's the main bedroom. Uh, yeah, the bathroom, just new tiles, new vanity. Uh, we kept the, um, the wash basin and, and the rest of it. So the numbers, uh, yeah, purchase 173,500, rental 9K. I revalued it uh, about six months. Back then, you couldn't do three months, so you have to wait six months. Uh, 245, so I got my deposit out. So my mortgage is 200K, so you see how that works. So actually, my mortgage covers the uh, purchase price and the rental. So actually, I got more money out of it. Um, yeah, but don't do overdo it, though, because that's how a lot of people go broke. Uh, the current rent is uh, 350 a week, U is 9.1. So it's just no money down, um, good cash flow. I get about 100 bucks a week from this. Uh, and then 150K equity in three years. So number two, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a big unit, uh, 80 square internal meters, uh, plus the courtyard, six in a block, the bottom one uh, in the middle. Um, yeah, CV is 275. So before it was really dark, and um, it wasn't on the market for a while because they couldn't sell it because um, you can see the curtains, right? One thing, if you want to install curtains, make sure your curtain track is much longer than the window. So your curtain doesn't actually hang off the window. Otherwise, it's, you block the sun. You know, you ha you'd rather have your curtains hanging off, off the, on the wall. Uh, and the, the, dark, the color of the, of, the, of the carpet is just not good. You know, when you have a dark place, you don't, you don't want to do that, you know? Um, yeah, so my, that's my painter guy. Um, yeah, it was all original, pretty yucky stuff. Um, yeah, the backyard was worse. Um, yeah, uh, there was no, no gutter on the, the thing, and it's all blocking the sun as well, the, the roof of the, um, what do you call it, pergola, or I don't know. Uh, and it's got a lemon tree, uh, we kept it. Uh, the bathroom, uh, yeah, pretty. Pretty bad. No, um, the shower was okay. It was, and the bath was recently done. But the vanity was the original. Toilet was as well. So this is what we done. We painted it, changed the carpet, new light fittings, um, <coughs> new curtains, etc. Um, that's the bathroom. We kept the bar. We kept the bath, Kept the showers. Just changed the vanity, paint, new lights, <coughs> toilet. We kept it as well. We just tiled it. Um, Basically, you want to spend as minimal as you can, but you want, still want to have a standard where it's fit for the area, so you can still achieve good rent. Um, so the kitchen, we just changed the bench top. We just painted the cupboards. Um, it was a paint of, coat of paint. You know, before, it was ugly brown. Now it's all white and, and shiny. Um, yeah, and uh, we just bought a few bags of the, the limestone, or whatever you call it, and a few 
blocks from Bunnings. Uh, we changed the roof. That was really important uh, to all clear. So the lets the light through because it was facing, uh, facing east on, on the side. So the numbers, uh, we pulled it for 2265, uh, 250, rental about 9K. Um, current value is uh, about 375 if I sell on the market. Uh, current rent is 380, gross yield is 8.4. So again, no money down, cash flow, 140K in um, equity. Uh, number three, um, it's the same block of number as the first property. Um, I bought off the neighbor, took uh, three months to negotiate down 5,000. Bloody bu uh, tough bugger. Uh, this was the after photo, is pretty much exactly the same one. Uh, the what we learned is uh, our first one, we didn't put enough uh, cupboard space, so we just hang some cupboards from, um, at the top uh, to make more room for people to put this stuff in. Um, same stuff, uh, the bus. The bus actually had a, like a pump, right, on the, just on the top, and, and when you turn it on, it's like, it's like louder than a bloody lawnmower. Uh, uh, apparently, it's massage thing. You, you, the air blows up the bottom of the, uh, the tub. But no, I don't want to do that because, it, see, the, the more appliance you put in a rental, it becomes a liability. Because every time it breaks down, you probably have to go and fix it, right? Um, like my Wellington, none of my uh, properties have got uh, dishwashers because in that area, tenants, don't, don't, they don't need dishwashers. They just wash, you know? If you're in Remirero or uh, higher class areas, then you need to because the tenant quality is different, you know? So you need to cater for that. Um, so the numbers are bought for 185, um, Renault 10k, uh, RV, oh, did I talk about RV last time? No, it should be about 300k, my mortgage is 208, so that covers the rental and the purchase, so again, there's no money down, cash flow, 105 uh, equity in two RVs. So unit four, um, it's a Mount Albert. Yeah, that's right, yeah, Mount Albert. Um, the worst block on the street because the, the problem with this one is it doesn't have a body cop, uh, it's a cross lease, uh, every owner hasn't done anything to it pretty much. And, um, but the thing is, this street is pretty good, you know, Wilcox Street. Um, so that's before photos. Um, yeah, it was the Seas Estate, so I have to, don't have to negotiate, which is good. Um, I don't like, yeah, I just let the agent do it. My, um, I, I don't go through listing agents because they don't work for me. Um, the carpet was really bad. Um, one thing that turned off people was uh, there was a leak on the outer wall, but even though it's concrete block, and, and it'll start to leak through here. So, um, yeah, I got it cheap at the auction, really. Uh, this, yeah, I just made it in the two bedroom again. Um, took down the wall between the, the lounge and the kitchen, and then put a wall in the uh, lounge, so that's like a small bedroom. So purchase a 203 500, which is really cheap for Mount, uh, Mount Albert. Uh, Renault, again, about 9K. RV is about 300, 350. Um, I'm actually um, body cop secretary now, so um, hopefully I can get this building um, up to shape and it might be even more worse for 400. Uh, because, yeah, Mount Albert um, units are 7400 plus these days. Uh, mortgage is 216, so yeah, again, no money down. Cash flow, and uh, after this point, I saw uh, better buying, uh, you know, better quality units uh, because these are good. Um, they're not good looking, but they're good cash flow. But I want to buy okay cash flow, but good looking, you know, uh, good capital gain. Uh, oh, this is the, my dad's place. Um, he doesn't have enough deposit, so oh, uh, he, he can't buy this. He doesn't have income, so um, so we, we purchased under our name and. Um, the good thing is we can use the equity out of it, uh, which is quite fortunate. Uh, yeah, Evandale Heights, really good area. Um, yeah, I, I'm surprised it wasn't sold actually. Uh, and uh, yeah, we purchased 358. Um, for a, it's a three bedroom, three whole uh, 400 square meters of land. RV at the time should be about 420. I think I've done a valuation at the time. Um, just your normal. Um, hardy plank, um, but yeah, below average construction, some people think of it, so it's nothing fancy or anything. Um, that was the inside, it's okay, but it's, that, it's built in 2003, I think, so we, we did a complete rental of it. Um, I actually didn't keep pictures of it, because it's not really my place. 
so the RV at the moment currently is probably if I put on market, I would expect probably 600 for it because inside it's all, all new and, and fancy. Uh, so yeah, 200K plus in two years, so it's pretty good. Uh, unit five, that's when I went uh, upper market in the Mount Eden. Uh, so this one bedroom, you can see the same one bedroom in the two. Um, yeah, tending a block, cross lease, uh, school zone is Auckland Boys and Girls Grammar. Uh, I purchased at 285,000 uh, December. Uh, I didn't have the before photos, but it was the worst condition unit I've seen. Uh, the shower was leaking and uh, yeah, it was re really yuck. Pretty much we, the only thing we didn't demolish was half of the bath bathroom wall. Everything was demolished. We um, pretty much put all the new internal walls to reposition pretty much everything except the bathroom. Uh, we made it the two bedroom. Uh, so yeah, reno quite a lot, 25K, and now it's worth um, probably four tw uh, 520 because the uh, one of the units uh, across the street, right direct of this one, so for about 252, uh, 255, yeah. Hang on, hang on, 525, yeah. So this should be worth about that. Um, yeah, 200K in less than two years. Which is quite good. Uh, probably number six. These are probably even better. Three bedroom townhouse, half share of uh, 1,000. So you've got Tirakau Drive and it's like up the hill. It's between the traffic lights and the bridge to the east. Um, yeah, big backyard, concrete backyard, and a nice grass area. Really good for families. Uh, it's got internal garage down the, uh, it's like one and a half levels. It's got internal garage down the bottom. And then got big bedroom, which was illegal, and then got on laundry at downstairs. Uh, we bought, bought it for 340. Afterwards, we spent 30K. Um, made the, because of a lot of parking area, so we concreted a lot of the parking, the grass area down the bottom. Uh, and then uh, we changed the uh, garage into a rumpus room. So you actually have like a, a, a lounge and a, a bedroom, uh, laundry. Actually, we had a bathroom as well. Um, so you can easily rent 600 plus. The RV should be about 600. So yeah, 230, um, one and a half years. That's a good deal, yeah. Now there's a twist, I always like twist. What do you think, uh, what, there's something wrong with this. Anyone have a guess? No? No, no, no. The problem is that we didn't keep it. The builder actually found this place because um, as Ron says, you should buy in central Auckland, that's what we did. So we actually didn't even look out outside the area. So uh, the builder who has been renovating for us for the last five units, um, you know, his friend found that, so he wanted to do a partnership. So that's what he did. He, produced, uh, he provided 20% deposit. He uh, contributed the rental money and we just come up with a mortgage and he will manage everything. So in the end, we spent 60K. Uh, and we got a fight out of that as well because initially you say it's only going to be 30k, but in the end it cost us 60k, but it's really nice done up. As you can see the photo, we staged it. Auction, no good. Uh, auction only came to 440 um, because of the rental and other costs because uh, we bought it in, we settled in February, but by the time we sold it, it was in July. So it took like six months to bloody renovate it because my builder was on other jobs making himself money, but doesn't make me any money. You see the, pro the problem is? Uh, so the other costs, like um, the agent's fees, the, the interest rate on the loan, right? Um, the set, set uh, you know, other costs, you know, be, uh, and rental was the big killer. So in the end, we sold for 490, um, we only made about 25K each, you know? So trading is not that easy. I mean, we could have done it better, um, but in hindsight, keeping it is much better, you know? Uh, it's all the opportunity cost as well. It's like six months just for that. See, if I bought this, I kept I'd spend a month doing it up, right, and then rented it out. Um, say it, it takes two months, and I got another four months to buy me another one. You know, I could have made another 100k or 200 or out of it. You know, uh, so the opportunity cost is quite a lot. Um, so, um, and um, an advice for me is, if you want to do a trade, it must be your last property. That means your bowling capacity is maxed out, and the next property is your last. Then you can think about maybe trading, right? 
Uh, otherwise, you're just wasting a lot of uh, opportunity, especially uh, if you're especially on the uh, up market. Um, I'm going to talk about um, the property cycle uh, later on. Uh, so back to number six. See, that was number six, but we sold it, so we have to keep buying another number six. So um, I always like Peninsula because I, uh, yeah, uh, Evandale is kind of westy a um, little bit. Uh, so Beach Road is like east side of the peninsula. Um, it's quite a unique complex, uh, 3,000, yeah, it's a block of 10. It's like 3,000, was built by the church people. So it's like all a community group kind of thing. It's quite homey. Um, yeah, nice trees, well, really well looked after. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, it wasn't selling for three months. So, but uh, hey, maybe it was just waiting for me. So I bought it for 358. Okay, um, this is what it looks like. Quite good, the uh, interior is okay. Um, so I didn't spend a cent uh, renovating. I think my wife was pregnant too, yeah. So, so we, get a, we have thing against renovating when she's pregnant. Um, no, no, not good feng shui, feng shui, yeah. Um, yeah, so the RV is probably about 450 because my neighbor sold it for 420 beginning of the year, so about 450 now. Um, gross use 6.1, it's not good, great, but it's more for, um, it's a nicer, nicer capital gain kind of property. Um, but still, I made about 100K in 12 months, which is good, quite good. Number seven, um, back to units, it's a one bedroom, two level townhouse, so it's actually open planned, uh, like the, the roof, the sharp roof, uh, that's where the second level is. So it's quite unique. Um, I've never seen a design like this. Um, so I purchased the auction at 267. Again, I didn't renovate it. Um, yeah, value about 340. A um, couple of the neighbors, they sold about a couple of months ago um, for 320, 300. So I think it's about 340 now. Uh, currently, 340 a week rent. Um, 76k in 12 months, which is good. Because if you if you look at the um, return on investment, because this is such a low base and this is quite a lot, so if you work it out, it's it's like 20% uh, in one year, you know, yeah, increase. Yeah, I've been here too long, so I, I can't. I have to use a calculator. So you can work it out yourself. Uh, in size, um, yeah, it looks great. It looks great actually. The, photo, for the photographer took really good pictures. Um, it's actually. The, a bit run down than that, but um, uh, that's what I use too. Um, like uh, when I advertise for tenants, I use those pictures. Man, this just suck people in, man. I first opened on my like 20 people. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, the most recent purchase, number eight and nine, is uh, early this year, end of Jan. Um, this was uh, Mount Wellington Highway. Um, yeah, just north of Sylvia Park. Um, Two bedrooms each, uh, four in a block. Yeah, I like smaller blocks and uh, single level now. Um, purchased for a combined value of 550. Uh, rental about 5K on unit nine. Uh, unit eight was you know, quite good condition and uh, I kept a good existing tenant. All the flower will work as all the tenants. So you know, um, I rented pretty low for the elderly lady um, because at the time I don't want to renovate both at the same time. Um, and, and the other one, after I renovated, um, I'm running out 360 to a family, you know. Um, and the good thing is uh, 150K at purchase. Didn't even have to wait for it. Because the good thing is um, uh, our students, they own a block, you know, just like 50 meters down the road, like still on, on Mount Wellington Highway. So uh, I knew what the values are because they're getting um, revalue like 350. So I know I'm going to get 350 if I get a value to value it. So... Um, yeah, and uh, because I bought that 275k each, um, yeah, I made 150 from that, which is good. Yeah, this is number eight, where the LD lady lives. Looks quite good. Uh, was recently renovated, maybe three years ago, five. Um, nothing been done to it. Uh, this is nine. Um, yeah, just the same colors. Um, I used uh, my, the, the tiles from my wife, wife's place. Um, also using stone fields which is quite good. I uh, got a massive big yard, backyard, um, really good. We cut down a big tree as well and took a lot of work, um, yeah. So after three years, I uh, made about 1.3 million in uh, equity over nine rentals, passive income 22K uh, after deducting my home mortgage. Uh, if, if I don't include the home mortgage, it's, uh, I think it's like 45K, which I can't believe, yeah. Uh, and, the, and the thing is, um, 
if we sell it, if we sell now, right, we can sell six units, keep three free hold, no mortgage, uh, pay off the, uh, the home mortgage as well, and then we get uh, 1100 a week, uh, and then my wife's financially free, pretty much. Uh, but well, we're not going to do that because uh, I have to have enough properties to make myself financially free too. <laughs> right? So the lessons learned is uh, you have to have a coach. Uh, I'm, I'm, because Martin and Gordon have done a lot of selling for Ron, so I want to keep that down to be, try to be neutral. Uh, we don't get paid for this, by the way. This is just by passion. Um, so uh, having a coach, uh, passive income is, is key. Right? Buy and hold is much better for trading. Um, if you trade, you just lose it and you start have to, it's like you, you, you walk a step up in the ladder and you, you, once you sell it, you step back down again, right? And you just keep going, keep going. But the passive income is really, uh, you need the numbers, you need the number of properties. The more, the more there's, the better. Because properties, um, uh, more, one of the big reasons why property going value is actually because of deflation. It's actually the value of the property doesn't change, the intrinsic value doesn't change, but because of the the, the, the currency you're valuing it is decreasing in value. That's why it makes property go up in value. But of, of course, there's also other factors like demand, demographic change, uh, things like that, that make uh, property go, go up in value. Um, number three is uh, learn one way to make great money and master it and repeat it. That's what I've done, yeah. Uh, I haven't gone into building or anything like that. Um, I don't have a team for building and I've got no knowledge about that, and uh, most importantly, I don't have the money anyway, so um, I'd rather just keep buying and hold, buying and hold. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about that, why I do it. Um, never stop learning and taking action. Um, number five, always have a passion. You, you know, you have to make uh, probably investing a hobby, the hobby of choice, right? Like say for example, if you've got an hour to spend, what would you want to do? Watch TV on the couch or buy property? You know, if you want to get ahead in life, you need to do, um, like Tony Robbins said, you, have a, you need to do things that are, uh, um, make you happy and also good for you as well. There's no point doing something that's not good for you, but make you happy, like computer games, you know? So I try to cut down on that. <laughs> I'll keep my wife happy too. I'm going to relationships uh, shortly. So your success is limited to, by your, to yourself, right? Um, if you want to be successful, you need, to, um, you need to surround yourself with people who are better than you. Like for example, if you want to be a good property investor, you need to have friends that uh, have got more property than you. you know? There's no point talking about uh, taking advice from someone who got less property than you. You know what I mean? Uh, no offense to people who got less property than me, but um, I'm, I'm direct about that, right? Um, the last thing, um, the first of the selling points, I uh, have a property, uh, Ron Hoifong as your coach. That's really important, right? Um, tips and advice for new uh, investors, so property advice, oh, 9 o'clock, I'm good. Um, location, location, location. You know, I didn't learn this from Ron, it's, you know, it's a Kiwi thing, it's everywhere, you know. When you have the, you should be a, like a home improvement program, where they, um, it was named location, location, location. I can remember the, the Kiwi guy's uh, face, I can't, yeah. Anyway, good, good location means you have a good quality, uh, uh, tenants and stable cash flow. Because if you buy in Clinton or uh, Ranui, uh, you know, dock areas like that, um, yeah, sure, your cash flow on the on the numbers on the paper is good. But the problem is, you could have you know bad tenants once in a while, and uh, and um, you know uh, it causes a lot of anxiety and distress. Actually, a lot of um, investors give up because they've got bad tenants. It's all emotional. You know, once you get too emotional about it. Or all the distress, all the pain that causes you, you're gonna, gonna dump it, and that's gonna, you're gonna lose money, right? Um, also, good location means good capital gain, so that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to buy good cash flow in good areas. Um, also, the most important thing is buying home owner area, because um, if you want, your properties to go up in value, actually the homeowners push up the price, right? Investors would drive down the price. So in the newspaper, all the, uh, Reporters who got no property experience, they say, "Oh, investors are, are to blame for this." Nah, as a homeowners, I'm not going to overpay for you know <laughs> things like that. And I've got the bank to look after. Um, my strategy is um, I focus on. Uh, uh, I only came up with this like a year ago or something like that, maybe even less. Um, so um, yeah, it's about goal setting. The earlier you do it, the better. Um, 
So I really want like maybe 3,000, you know, gross net income. Um, I think that's pretty good. Um, no mortgage to pay. So is that is that good good income? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I see you guys want to drive Ferraris and stuff, so you got <laughs> higher standards. Okay, that's fine. So I'm 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 pretty modest. So 3,000, I'm happy. Right, so uh, all I need is 10 units, 350 each a week times 10. Um, I guess 3,500 gross, so 500 to pay off the rates and insurance um, because I look after my properties as well. Um, so that's good. The, down, the, my only problem is how do I pay off the loan? So what I do is I buy two, right? Sell one, keep one. So basically I need 10, right? So what I need to do is I buy, need to buy 20, you know? Uh, I mean, this strategy can work like 30 years. By the time 30 years, your loan will be paid off. But that's too, you know, I want to retire in four, by the time I'm 40, right? That's in 10 years' time. So I need to accelerate the buy and hold strategy, you know, to make it sexy. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I need to buy 20 units, right? The shortest time as possible. Um, so when the property is double in value, say in 10 years, um, I just sell half and use the capital gain from that, the profit, which is tax free, right? No trading rule, thing. Yeah, and then I pay off the, the, all the mortgage I have, and then 10 free hold. Um, so you need to work out a game plan for yourself, because um, you know, all the strategies are good and stuff, but um, most people in the room have got different incomes, different situations, different financial. Um, so you need to work it out for yourself. Right? Um, if you can't, you know, get some help, I guess, uh, through up here. Meet um, people who are more experienced and things and, and get their opinion. And then you need to form your own opinion as well, because there's no point learning stuff that, it, that you don't adapt, because knowledge and wisdom is two different things. Knowledge is something you take in. Wisdom is something you can, you can give back out, like it, you can make it your own, you know? Uh, yes, yeah, strategy for different investors. If you catch cash rich, income poor, obviously you want to have some good income. So I would uh, suggest maybe buy home and income block of uh, flats and units, then capital gain ones, once your cash flow is good. I won't go into too detail about this. Uh, average Joe is like me, um, okay income, okay cash, or I buy uh, cash flow properties in the you know, best areas I can get into. Um, like Ron said, like, uh, if an area, say number 10 is good, really good area, like Oraki, and your one is like Clinton and Ranui, you want to focus the four and six, between four and six, it's like, um, between St. Luke's to Mount Wellington kind of thing, you know? Um, like North Shore would be like Glenfield, Birkdale, uh, East Auckland, gee, is there any area that cheap? Um, Pakuranga maybe? South Auckland, North Shore, uh, West Peninsula, Teatro South, something like that. Um, if you've got poor income, uh, cash, good income, but then buy capital gain for the equity because then you can recycle the equity to keep buying. If you're cash, Poor and, and cash, in, uh, cash poor and income poor, then you have to really work hard. You know, you, um, try to bet, buy cash flow in really good, uh, in average uh, working class areas if you can. Um, yeah, put a lot more effort and time into it. And also, the income thing is if you can upskill in your job at the same time, you know, get more income, that's really good because these days, income is really important. You know, the bank look at your personal income as, long, uh, as well as the rental income. If you, if you focus everything in property, then then and you're not climbing your, your job ladder, then your income level is going to be stuck and doesn't doesn't help. Yeah. So um, yeah, you have to be multitask, I guess, uh, in life. Uh, yeah, basically balance of cash flow and equity to keep buying. Otherwise, you can't get a mortgage. Really, uh, having a, a good mortgage broker can help you plan. Uh, properties to avoid, obviously, like Gordon says, don't buy um, next to motorway, don't buy near power, uh, power pylons, um, usually about 200 meters away, you know, um, and it's not in your face as well. Like when you drive a property, the worst thing you want a tenant to see is like pylons right in your face um, behind the property. It's real. Yeah, the, the values don't go up, and, and if the values don't go up, you lose money because other properties are going up faster, you know. Uh, yeah, no, no next to railways, uh, stay away from gang areas. Um, you know, gang areas, it's like in a homeowner area, you're most less likely to have gangs, right? Uh, mass housing in areas like uh, Glen Innes, Point England, 
some parts of Mount Rosco, uh, try to stay away from that because, hey, homeowners can't buy into the area, so they, the prices won't get pushed up. Um, I mean, this sounds like polit politically incorrect, but uh, poor people, yeah. Oh, uh, that was where I'll stop on that one. A plaster, 2000, <laughs> one, one, um, 92 onwards, uh, don't touch it. Um, it's leaking, it's, it's got a bad reputation. Even though the ones that have got a cavity, they're still tainted. People are saying, oh, is it leaking? When they look at it, so just don't buy those, right? Uh, terrace houses, uh, low capital gain, uh, most are leaky. Um, unfortunately, um, my mum used to own one in Sojak Place next to uh, Pack and Saving Mount Albert. She bought in 250 in 2002, sold in 2003. Uh, nowadays, they only worth about 330. So this is like 10 years, uh, to about 70k. You know, it's even even doubled. So that's really bad capital gains. And the worst thing is, if you buy something that has got half the capital gain in the next place, uh, what happens is you actually lost that money. Right, I mean, and, and, and yeah, if you want to upgrade from that to that, you have to top up the difference. Uh, apartments, um, mostly cap, um, cash flow is good, um, really good for cash rich, um, income poor investors. But the problem is now, um, like a lot of them are leaky, right? Like you don't know because like, even though it's concrete, and sometimes it can leak and that's the leaky potential. I'd rather stay away from that because you can buy it, it's not leaking, but it could leak. And um, you know, usually it involves millions of dollars to fix it up. Um, so you know, that will affect the capital value as well. <coughs> uh, pay value, fair value. Um, properties are usually between three classes. One is done up, your bling bling ones, uh, right, by the traders. So usually if you buy those, you, make, you don't make much money, right? You, uh, 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 average properties, some money to be made there. You can get a reasonable price usually. And do up properties. Sometimes um, you will have investors that overpay, right? But usually um, you can get good value. Um, so I, I generally target these two. And the main thing at the top is don't don't overpay, right? If it's a do up property, don't pay the price of a done up one. You know that's stupid. Like average one, you know, don't pay that price. The average one you want to pay that price. And do up properties you. Will, you want to pay that price and even lower if you can. You know, that's important. Uh, property clock. Um, so basically 12 o'clock is the, your boom, right? And then, and then it goes down and then it goes back up. Um, yeah, a lot of most people you should, have, should know this one. So we're currently around 11 o'clock uh, getting to the boom, top peak. But um, by the time 12 o'clock, I think it's going to be like 2015, 16. Even Tony Alexander thinks, um, from BNZ, thinks uh, it's going to be 2018. So uh, it's going to make, re make me rich, right? <laughs> and I know of you too, which is good. Um, now the property clock, it's all driven by emotion, right? Uh, same as the stocks, same as the economy, it's all driven by emotion. Um, so when the emotion is high, what happens is, like when you start to, the boom start to go up, uh, the, bank, the bank purse um, loosens. So right? when the bank loosens, you can get finance easier, so you can buy easier. So everyone just keep buying, get on the bandwagon, right? And the prices will keep going up. As you keep going up, you know more newspapers like the Block Australia, Block, uh, block New Zealand, Block France, <laughs> uh, Block Spain, things like that, all, all appear in the TV programs. That's when you know, you know, um, emotions are going up. When emotions go up, prices go up, right? So if you want to predict the future, and you just need to look at the emotion. Right, if, if your taxi driver is sharing property tips, you know it's going to be a problem. <laughs> right, and, and if, if everyone is thinking, uh, is, is start to think, oh, is it going to drop? Is it going to, you know, uh, and you know there's an economy as well, you know. Um, generally, it will go down because information age, we have information age now, so it's a lot easier to, to see the trend. So as a property investor, your job is not to predict what's going to happen, right, because you know what's going to happen. Your job is to, to observe the signs when the, the property clock turns, when it goes through different phases. You need to know, you know when is it going to slump, when is it going to uh, recover. You know, because the, the best time to buy is, is around here. Right? When it starts to recover, when the slump starts to, to drop down to the bottom, then when you start to buy. Because here, you can, you can bargain the hell down of properties. You, know? you don't have to wait to the bottom. You can, you can keep bargaining, you know? 100K below CV or something. 
like that. You know, these kids just need to try a lot hard and make a lot more offers. If one accepts, man, you you, you make heaps of um, equity from it. Um, so uh, educate yourself. Like the books, I started with Rich Dad Poor Dad, which I found really good. Uh, I don't like reading books, but that was really quite enjoyable. Um, Quay Wells uh, by Andrew King. He's like um, Ollie Newland. Oh, I probably better than that because he hasn't gone bankrupt, right? And uh, Bob Jones kind of type. Um, Dolph the Roos, he's really good. Um, I find his books really good. Uh, yeah, going rich with the property cycle, clearing trash, and uh, you know, and David Whitburn's book. You know, you must buy that. You know, um, because I'm up here, I need to say that. And uh, no, but no, that book is really good. Um, it's got a lot of details and things. And uh, last but not least, any books that mention Ron Hoi Fong, you must you must buy it, right? Um, personal development. Now, none of the books will tell you, teach, uh, I haven't seen any books teach about uh, personal development, and you're probably thinking, what the hell has it got to do with property? So, but um, I think, um, first of all, wealth and personal development, it goes hand to hand. What I mean in personal development, it's like your ethics, you know, how you treat people, how you um, treat yourself, how you, how you, um, treat your life and your family and things like that, right? And also how you manage money. So um, to buy properties and make money, you know, uh, you need to up, upskill yourself as well because you, you could have, um, like the classic scenario is like you could have a lot of winners, right? They get all this massive amount of money, but they don't know how to use it because their personal development hasn't reached a level where they can actually manage the money. So they blow on hookers, uh, motorbikes, and. <laughs> I don't know, uh, Ferraris and things like that. So Gordon, don't get crazy when you're rich, right? <laughs> so casinos and things like that. So, um, so some investors, you know, um, like the ones who got gone broke in 2008, that's probably what happened. You know, they got cocky, they think they can do it, and they were buying the whole strategy, and then they move into development, which they knew nothing about, and they lost money, and the money turned, uh, the market turned, and they were too arrogant to, to see it. So you have to, Keep developing yourself personally as well on, um, to, yeah, to have a good balance like uh, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, you know, they're, they're really down to earth. You, know, they don't, you don't see them driving a Ferrari or a Lamborghini and show off and things like that, um, you know, which they should actually because it's kind of boring. <laughs> like, like Warren Buffett buys the same suit like three at a time. I was like, come on, man. <laughs> anyway, um, pain and pleasure, we just find quite good, like Anthony Robbins. He's the guru of uh, personal development. Um, the secret of success is learning how to use pain and pleasure instead of ha having pain and pleasure use you. Like for example, who can't get up in the morning? Right? Exactly. Me too. You know, I'm not perfect. You know, I'm, I'm not Anthony Robbins. You know, I'm just the average Joe. You know. Um, yeah, getting up in the morning is the pain because you have to get up. It's cold, you know, that's the pain. But what makes, up, makes you get up in the morning? Because if you don't get up, you're going to be late for work. You're going to get fired. So there's a bigger pain. <laughs> so right, you rather accept the small pain instead of avoiding the bigger pain. So with the property as well, if you haven't look, have look, pro, trouble looking at getting out of your sofa, out of your TV soap to look at properties at night, especially in the rain. That's because you have that pain, you know, the rain, the cold, and stuff like that. But you need to counteract that with, like, um, with passion, with, um, you know, um, think that, oh, if I go out there, I'm going to make money. I'm going to be financially rich and retire. You think ahead in the future. Dream about what you will be, will be to create enough pleasure to overcome the pain, right? And also think about if I keep sitting in the sofa and watch TV, I'm going to do nothing. I'm doing something that's bad for me. Um, I'm, I'm going to be fair to equate pain to counteract that pleasure as well. Um, and that same goes with lack of action. So, yeah, that's right. So we're pretty all normal. We all raise our hands. So it's okay. It's okay because this is, this is what, what we are. We are human. So we, we, we go to the lazy route if we can. But if you want to get ahead in life, you need to do something different, right? Uh, develop a passion. Right? Passion is really important. Once you have the passion, then you, have, you can create all the pleasures out of it, right? To, to, to keep driving you. To, um, like, for example, up here, you know, if you keep coming to the meeting, it's like, a, it's like a petrol station where you fill up. You, know? you meet different investors, get ideas, you, you get motivation from it. You know? um, so passion equals, uh, will lead, lead to more learning action, and then ultimately it will be more success. 
And part of, part of personal development is, is also keeping that passion alive. I've seen a lot of investors, some students as well in our group, that they, they, they did great at start, but they didn't keep the momentum going. You know, it's like what Romney, uh, Anthony Robbins says, that sometimes you will have a drawback, where you try to, like, you, you've taken a step to be a new person, but sometimes when you've got success, and, uh, and sometimes you, you, your old self, your old habits try to pull you back. So it's something that you need to look at, look, look, um, to be mindful of as well. And, and we're, this is where uh, having your third eye and fourth eye, that's important. Like we have two eyes, right? Most of, yeah, yeah, we all have two eyes. But the, the thing is our eyes look outside, but we don't look in. So you need to have your third eye to look into yourself. You need to be aware, be aware of what the hell you're doing all the time. Like where I'm, if I'm talking, I'm trying to control myself to me not be a show off or, and things like that. So you need to be mindful like every, like every time you do something or talk or things like that, you need to see Am I doing the right thing? You know, am, I, am I saying the right thing? You know, things like that. So if you have got that, then you can like, self-monitor yourself. You know? uh, four sides is, is uh, if you've got a partner, right? if you've got a wife or husband, they can be the four side because they, they spend the most time with you. So they, know, they know you. Right? If you step out of a track or something like that, then they can, they can pull you in the right direction. Um, fifth one is, uh, all, is combining all those topics, you know, turn pain into pleasure, how to control it, right? Use more pain to control pain if that works for you. Uh, or reward yourself with pleasure, or any combination of these two. You know, you have to write balance to keep you motivated, all right? And um, yeah, uh, and, and, and when you do property and stuff, like every time you, you, you buy property, you make money or things like that, reward yourself, you know? Go to the movies with your partner or your friends. Try to reward yourself and create a lot of pleasure out of it. So every time you make a property, you think about, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see that great movie and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah use passion to overcome um, pain and fear. Control your behavior, thoughts, and habits. That's really important. Uh, karma, give and you shall receive. Right? There's no... no, there's no um, like I really believe this is if you, if you give first, and not expecting a reward, and, and, and things will go, go, go better for you. And that's what I really believe, right? Because the, that will lead to a respect as well. Like, there's no point in life where you've got heaps of money, right? And everyone thinks you're a dickhead. <laughs> What's the point of that, right? You want to have a legacy. You want, you want people standing all around you, like heaps of people standing around you in your grave uh, during your... Um, yeah, I shouldn't talk about that, right? Sure. Yeah, but you know what I mean. You don't want, you, you, it's good to have people who respect you, right? So when you're in a hardship and stuff, you actually have friends who care about you and look after you. But if you treat people like dirt, no one, when, when you, your money or whatever is down, and when you're down, no one's going to get you back up, right? And relationships, right? Most of us, we, we won't stay single all our lives. So long lasting relationships we cause eternal happiness, right? And uh, short relationships equals unhappiness and financial doom, right? If an average guy, right, say he's got a job, uh, 25 years old, right, he buys his first home, 30-year mortgage, 55. By the time you're 55, you have to start saving for retirement because you only got 10 years to 65. Now, what happens if you got a divorce during that 30 years or whatever? Then you start, you know, you start from zero again, and then your retirement plan is gone. You know, that's, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the reality, right? So no matter how many properties you got, if you got 30, 20, whatever, if you go through a divorce, bam, half. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So having that personal development, right, keeps a good relationship. And when you combine two into one, you know, you can, you can get move forward uh, much better, right? So educate yourself. Now, I really like the Get the Edge and Personal Power from Anthony Robbins. That's really good. If you drive to work every morning, instead of uh, listening to classic rock and shit like that, <laughs> listen to this guy. He's good. He's good, man. Yeah, because I think the modern-day Superman is, is the, the, the people who can control their thoughts, right? Uh, and uh, make themselves better, right? And uh, I really like the also why men don't listen and women can't read maps. If you want to get to know the other half better, that's a really good book, man. Because like sometimes my wife complains and stuff, exactly know what's going on. You know, I exactly know what's, what's going through. If you, like, uh, she have to talk to about work and, and blah, 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 and things, 
You know, I, I know because it's a way to, um, what do you call it, release the distress, you know? So, um, and uh, how to make friends and influence people. Uh, I, ex uh, I was given that book by um, a flatmate of mine um, about 10, 10, 12 years ago, and I never read it. I still haven't read it now, but I know ex actually what it says. You know, it's, it's, um, if you want to make friends and, and influence people, it's give first, right? Receive second. You know, that's how I treat my friends as well. F friends who, who give back, right? Who really treasure what, what, what I do. It's a two way thing. You know, if you keep giving and you're not receiving, you know you're not going to, that's not a good friend to have. 